10,000 subscribers. That's something I didn't expect to happen uh, this early. I mean, I didn't ever expect to actually get to it, but here we are, I guess. So this is it, <laughs> the 10K special. Now, usually with these kind of intros, I'd usually type up a script, but you know what? Fuck it, we're not going with a script this time. This is, it's surreal to think about uh, the fact that, you know, we've gotten here. We're here now. We're at 10K. I'd just like to say thank you. Thank you, all of you, so much for this incredible uh, milestone. I don't know, but it's amazing. Thank you so much. And if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here today. Um, you guys drive me to continue making videos and, uh, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm still doing it. So as promised, uh, this is the Q&A. Uh, you guys sent me a bunch of questions. And to all of you who sent in questions, thank you so much. Um, so without further ado, let's get right into the Q&A. I have two because I'm greedy. First one being, how did you come up with the name Nebd? And where did the design of your pyramid-headed mascot come from? That's actually an interesting question, um, and a good one to start off with. So, the way I came up with Nebd was basically, my real name is Ben, and the first thing I did with that is I decided to reverse it, so it was Neb, um, which I thought it was really nice. And then really, all I, <laughs> all I did was I really just added B-E-D to the end of it, so it was just Nebd. So it sounded like a phrase. After I came up with the name, a mate of mine that I know, IRL, actually found out that the word nebbed is actually a real word. And if you look up the definition of nebbed, there are two definitions for it. The first one being the writing point of a pen, especially an insertable tampered metal part with a split tip. But the second definition is where it's interesting. The second definition of nebbed is a point, tip, or beak. And especially with the beak part, I thought that was actually kind of symbolic, I guess, because, you know, for those who've known me for much longer outside of this channel, um, for four years I did, I had another YouTube channel uh, called Hawkren, where I had this hawk mascot, and coincidentally, hawks have beaks. And I thought there was a sort of nice homage to my old channel. I guess it was just a name that I just thought was actually really nice. It had a nice ring to it. And uh, that's really just how I came up with it. It was just reversing my name and then just adding a few letters to the end of it. And uh, that's how I really came up with the name. Now regarding my pyramid headed mascot, as you put it, there was a lot of influences to it. But the main one was Daft Punk. You know, I kind of liked the sort of like look that they had the sleek metal robot heads and initially one of the concepts was actually going to be a robot head um but i decided against it because i was worried that it was just going to be too much like daft punk with another aspect of the daft punk influence being the pyramid shaped stages that they had for their live tours that they did back in 2007 um and i thought it was really cool and even then, I like the pyramid shape in general, and I thought it'd be really cool to experiment with something like that. And I just slapped on some glasses because I thought that'd be nice. And then it was just a matter of trying to figure out like what I could do with the look of it. And I like neon colors. Neon colors for me is like really nice. And so I just did that and just slapped it together. One of the concepts I actually had, which I'll put on screen right now, was like this low poly like head, but it looked kind of like a lizard. Like, if you really look at it, it's just, it's got like a low poly lizard look, which I kind of liked, but I decided to reject it um, because I didn't really like how it came out. And then I just took the pyramid shaped head and I just slapped a suit on it. And then I just basically cut off the neck. And uh, yeah, that's really it. There was just, that was just it. Who are you? How did you get this number? Don't call me again or I'll report you to the FDA. What? <laughs> Thoughts on the royal family? Eh. Do you believe in the Illuminati conspiracy? No. Are you the Prince of Australia? No. <laughs> it's no prince, there's no royal family within Australia. Face reveal when? <sighs> Alright, I might as well explain this one. Just for once, and then... If anyone mentions it in the future, I guess, just bring him back to this video. Um... 
so I had thoughts about that. I was thinking about doing a face reveal, possibly at around 100k. But as I really thought about it, I thought, like, maybe not. Main reason being is, like, I have a lot of concerns surrounding my privacy. I'm very protective of my privacy, and I value it very, very much. I want to experiment with the mascot. I want to be able to do something with the mascot, like, in public appearances at some point, where, you know, I'd wear, like, a business suit, have the black gloves, um, and I'd have the helmet. I'd love to make a nebbed helmet. I think that'd be really cool. Um, but the practicality of it is a bit ridiculous considering its shape and also the fact that it glows. But I think it'd still be cool to experiment with. But yeah, it's just... I'm glad that you asked this because I feel like I would have had to answer it at some point. But I think for now, I don't think I'd be doing a face reveal anytime soon, regardless of any milestones or whatever. And I don't want to make any promises about doing a face reveal at this milestone and then I decide, no, I don't want to do it. So, for now it's just, uh, it's up in the air, but for now I just don't want to do one. Um, but that may change, I might change my stance on it and then I might decide to do one at some point. But for now, it's, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. When are you doing a voice reveal? I'm doing one right now, I've already revealed my voice. When are you going to break out of your mortal shell and consume the 13 realms? Uh, when is Elden Ring coming out? I don't know. Is Dark Souls 2 a good game? I haven't played it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I haven't played it. I haven't played Dark Souls 2. Played a little bit of Dark Souls 3, and then I gave up on that because I wasn't really enjoying it. Is Australia real? Yes. When is the documentary about me coming out? Documentary about you? I, I don't know you. I don't know anything about you. How old are you? I'm 19. I like you forever. <laughs> Thank you. That wasn't really a question, but I appreciate it. What's your favorite music? Ooh, that's a toughie. That's a tough one. I wouldn't really know, like, because the thing is for me, I don't have favorites of anything. I just like stuff and then just listen to it depending on how I feel about on a particular day, whether it be a movie, uh, any kind of music, food, anything. I don't have any favorites. What kind of music taste do you have? I guess I really like electronic music, um, mixed with some house music, specifically like French house music. I've been really diving into that recently and I really enjoy it. Also a lot of disco, jazz, some rock, some pop songs too, yeah. That's, that's really it, I can't really describe my music taste that much, but I hope that answers it. So far, what has been your greatest motivation to make quality content on YouTube? I mean, just people just liking the stuff and just enjoyment that I have coming out of making videos. I enjoy making videos for fun. And that's only amplified when, like, you know, by the fact that people watch it and people enjoy it. And I aim to do the best I can to make the best stuff. <laughs> oh my god, this is a long one. So the other day at work, my boss told us that he recently discovered the video game Among Us, and ever since, his behavior has become rather concerning. He now refers to me and my co-workers as crewmates. Last Wednesday, when he noticed my teenage colleague slacking off at his workstation, he yelled at him saying he was faking his tasks, and he's... <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> and is acting sus. I confronted my boss telling him that his behavior lately has been egregious and immature and he proceeded to call me an idiot and yelled it kicked. The next day I called him dancing around in his office blasting a mong drip from his desktop at full volume. I entered his office to kindly ask him to turn off the music since it was distracting to me and my co-workers. He looked at me angrily, <laughs> telling me he has called an emergency meeting, instructing me to have a seat. I asked him what was the matter and he told me that I have been acting extremely sus. He repeatedly yelled, you're the imposter, telling me to say goodbye to my job because I have been ejected. I fucking lost my job and I don't know what to do. Any advice? Eh, it was for the best. Shitty boss anyways. What topic do you really want to make a video about but don't know how? That's actually a really good one. That's a very good question. <laughs> If I had to pick one topic that I really wanted to talk about but I didn't know how to, it would be stand culture. I don't know, there's something about it all that is just 
extremely hard for me to put into words without either siding with one side or the other because I think the thing the thing is is that nowadays everything has to be either for or against right you can't really have a neutral decision on things nowadays and when it comes to talking about stan culture it's either again you're for or against it but I really want to talk about it in a sense that's neutral but the problem is people are going to get offended or some people are going to rally behind me saying that I'm this hero for fighting against stan culture or whatever but yeah I would like to make a video on stan culture and like just talking about its history you know the impact that it's had and my personal thoughts on it but the problem is like again I can't really speak on a neutral level because people will one group side of people will take it one way and another side will take it another because for me I'm mixed on the whole thing I don't really know what to think of it it's just this huge thing um, that putting it into words has been kind of difficult for me and uh, I do hope that someday I can actually make a video on it because I'd, I would like to but it's just I have concerns regarding how people would take it and also like I have worries within myself as to how I'm gonna phrase it and then I phrase something wrong and then just huge backlash and all that sort of stuff and that's the thing that kind of worries me but I do want to try make a video on stan culture at some point it is something that I feel like needs to be talked about more especially within uh, the smaller YouTube community, even the bigger one too, because I feel like people avoid it um, because of just how big it is and how extremely sensitive this sort of top this topic can be. Um, but yeah, has there ever been a video you just completely gave up on and have no motivation to go back to it? Not really. No, I haven't had a video where I just lost all motivation to work on it. Um, all the videos that I've worked on, I've had a lot of passion on working on, and uh, it's been really fun doing them. Uh, if there was something that I wasn't really interested in, in making a video on, I probably wouldn't do it, because I wouldn't want it to come off as forced, or just making a video for the sake of making a video. What is, in your opinion, the best video you made so far? I would have to say 100% a tribute to Gary's mod. I think that was... That, that's been my peak so far, I think. But yeah, like, I really enjoyed making a tribute to Gary's mod. It was a very long one, and an extremely personal one, but... Um, it was one that I was really proud of when I released it, and I couldn't be more happier with the response to it all. What gaming-related things are you currently working or have previously worked on? Mods, games, YouTube videos, etc. Um, I talked about how, for four years, before this channel, I had another channel where I spent four years making Gary's Mod videos. And that was just the gist of it. The entirety, well, the majority of my old channel was just Gary's Mod videos. And I touched upon uh, my first channel in a tribute to Gary's Mod, which there'll be a card up here if you want to check it out. But yeah, and then also throughout those four years, I also got myself involved in a lot of Gary's Mod servers and communities. Um, some that I was really happy to be a part of, and others I regretted being a part of. Um, I even tried starting my own community, and to this day I kind of regret it. Um, because, you know, uh, there was a lot of mistakes that were made, um, and I didn't really enjoy it. I wanted to do something fun, but the problem is there was a lot of limitations to it all. And, uh, yeah, it just wasn't good. It was not good at all. What were some of your inspirations for creating this channel? One of the main inspirations for creating this channel was uh, just my desire to just want to start fresh again. And I remember that a lot of people that I know when, when I talked about this, they were very worried, but they were still supportive of this endeavor. Because and understandably, I was coming from a channel that had 1.6k subscribers and people were just like, you know, why start fresh you know you have this channel why don't you just continue working off that but the thing is is I just felt like no matter what I did I felt like I was trapped with what I could do on that channel um, and I felt like moving to a new channel and starting fresh again was the best option and as it turns out it was it was the best decision it came with a huge risk but it ultimately paid off in the end and I couldn't be more happier with how everything's panned out. 
I still like to come back to my old channel from time to time, watch some old videos, despite how, you know, cringeworthy it is, um, especially with my old videos. It was, you know, it was a learning experience. The whole thing was a learning experience and it still is a learning experience. I'm still learning new things every day. Um, I'm improving the stuff I make. And even then I'm not always going to be perfect. Um, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the fact that I'm not going to be perfect. I'm not going to get everything right. And if there is something I've done that's not right, then I'm willing to accept that. Uh, and yeah. What is a YouTube channel show and or game that you wish everyone was aware of? To be quite honest, I don't really have an answer for that one. I wouldn't know. There's just so much out there that it's very hard for me to pick one. Yeah, I'm sorry if I couldn't answer that one. That's a very difficult one to answer. What YouTuber do you really want to collab with? Ooh, <laughs> that, that'd be an interesting one. Another big inspiration I had for creating my channel was because of Jay Schlatt. Um, specifically his first channel, his old channel where he posted a lot of video essays. When I started watching his stuff, just, it was actually a couple months ago when I first discovered Jay Schlatt's like old channel, but just a couple of months ago, before I launched the new channel, this channel, uh, I found out about Jay Schlatt's original channel and I started binge watching a lot of his video essays that he did. I was really uh, inspired by it and, uh, yeah, and if there's one YouTuber I really want to co collaborate with, it would be Jay Schlatt. Because I think he's a very interesting person. Uh, has a very interesting personality. I know now he does primarily gaming uh, content, but I think it would be very interesting uh, to see him sort of dabble back into video essays again. I think that'd be very interesting. Um, I mean, I'd certainly like to dabble into gaming content. And uh, it's just a matter of whether or not you guys want to see gaming content on this channel. Because my primary focus at the moment has been video essays. But I think now I feel like I'm starting to feel confident and I feel a lot more comfortable with dabbling into gaming content than before. But in short, if there was one content creator I would love to collaborate with, it would be Jay Schlatt. Absolutely. Favorite food and favorite drink? The reason why I'm saying both of those questions at the same time is because, to be honest, I don't have any favorites. I don't have favorite food or favorite drink. I mean, I guess for favorite drink, it'd either be a Fanta or, or a Sprite. <laughs> but favorite food, I think it's a bit harder to answer because I don't really have favorites. What is the worst game you ever played? I don't know if, I mean... If I'm editing this and I, f I remember the worst game I've ever played, I'll put it on on screen now, but I, I don't know. What is the best game you've ever played? That's also a very hard one, but if I think of one, then I'll put it up on screen right now. What software do you use to make your videos? I use HitFilm Pro, which is a very great editing software. To summarize, HitFilm Pro is basically Premiere Pro and After Effects combined into one program. If there is a video that you want to remake, what is it? What would you add to it? What would you change, etc.? Okay, I need to take a look at my videos for a moment. I'd say definitely uh, my We Designed the Next iPhone video. I think it was just the main thing I would change would be the length. I'd cut down the length of the video because the final video was like 23 minutes long. And there was a lot of asp like parts to the video that was just way too long. And uh, I would have definitely cut it down, mainly in terms of its length. There was nothing necessarily wrong with the video, but I think it was just that it was just way too long. And I'd probably cut it down to like 15 minutes. What is something that you just don't understand the hype for? Stan culture. 100% stan culture. I mean, I, th I guess I'd call myself old fashioned because of this. For me, I've just never really understood the sort of hype surrounding stan culture. You know, when I was younger and growing up watching YouTube, you know, there was just, I guess it was simpler because all it was was really, if there was someone you liked, you just liked their stuff. But I feel like, I think it's really an attachment thing. You know, with fans, like growing up being a fan of many YouTubers, there wasn't really that much of an attachment. You just watched your favorite YouTubers and then you just moved on. But with stand culture nowadays, it's more about creating a connection with, um, with 
the content creator, which that's what I see. Uh, at least that's what I get from Stan culture. Uh, and that's at least what I've seen from it. But yeah, I don't know. Like, I think that's one of the things that I don't really understand uh, the hype for. I hope that answers it. Uh, I, I kind of feel like I did a really shit job answering it. Um, but if you want clarification, just let me know down in the comments and uh, I'd be happy to clarify. Um, but at the moment, it's just... That's the one thing I don't really understand the hype for. Finally, how has this new chapter of YouTube been for you so far? It's been fantastic. Like, I've never been more happier doing YouTube again and starting this new chapter. Um, it's been really fun. But if anything, at the moment, I kind of feel like I should take some time off considering that for the past four months, all I've had on my mind has just been, you know, I gotta make videos, gotta make videos. And just as I've hit this like huge milestone, I sort of realize now that I haven't really put much time towards myself, like in terms of just spacing myself out a little bit. Um, and I feel like after this video, I'm probably gonna do just that. I'm probably gonna take a, a short break um, just to focus on myself, just to space myself out, and also give me some time, I guess, to just to wind down and not constantly worry. Overall, this whole experience has been nothing short of just incredible. Um, being able to do the things that I want to has been nothing short of amazing. Making videos for you all and just the process that goes into it is just amazing. I love video editing videos i love making stuff um and i think one of my biggest flaws if anything though at the same time is launching myself into so many different endeavors and different projects um that i have interest in for like a short span of time and then i just lose interest in it completely um and then i just lose interest and i just don't want to come back to it and i feel so awful about it at the same time because it's just like you know, I launch myself into these things and then I just not willing to continue it. Um, and it's something that I, I need to focus on improving and preventing myself from doing that again. Um, but yeah, this is, this has all been absolutely incredible. I'm probably going to take a short break and then after that, I'll be getting back into the swing of things. I got a lot of big stuff planned and uh, I am really excited to continue making videos for you all. So just to wrap things up, thank you once again so much for 10,000 subscribers. That, I still can't fathom that. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. And I cannot thank you guys enough for that and for what you guys have given me. I cannot wait to continue making videos for you all. And yeah, it's absolutely amazing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this special. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like. Uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comments and uh, consider subscribing if you enjoy this sort of stuff and you want to see more videos. Uh, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, leave a like, comment and uh, subscribe if you're interested. Uh, Share my videos with your friends. That'd be that'd mean a, a lot to me. Um, but you know, don't feel obligated to do that. You know, you guys, you do you. You know. But yeah, thank you for watching, and uh, have yourselves a great day. Take care, everybody. <laughs>